On today's show, we will be breaking down my top three prospects that are a little bit different than consensus. You'll want to stay tuned for that. Also, we're going to touch on some minor league signings. There was a flurry of them. Okay, let's do this from the state-of-the-art global podcasting center known as Maggie's Basement. Welcome to Vinny's World. This is Locked On Brewers. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back, all you cheesers, to Lockdown Brewers, brought to you by the Lockdown Brewers Podcast Network, talking about your favorite teams every day. I am Vinny Rotino. You can follow me on Twitter at Vinny Rotino, and also check me out on the pre- and post-game shows during the season for Valley Sports Wisconsin. Also, make sure you follow the Lockdown Brewers on Twitter and subscribe to the Lockdown Brewers Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks for making Lockdown Brewers your first listen every day. We post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are free and available on all platforms. So I'm coming to you from Racine, Wisconsin, from my basement in the depths of Cheeseland, and we're going to be getting into the first ever Future Friday on this show. That's what we're calling this one, Futures Friday. We're going to be talking about prospects, but before we do that, I need to introduce a special guest today. I'm bringing in a Brewers expert, an MLB savant is what I call this guy, This is one of the most knowledgeable baseball guys I know. He knows players. He knows stats. He's got a great eye. He can talk all things Brewers. And by the way, he's one of those really, really annoying golfers that's like really good, shoots like a 75 and thinks he, you know, shot bad. But Dom Catronio, welcome to the show. Why you got to out me like that? Now I can't (laughs) hustle anybody that's listening. (laughs) Sandbagger. (laughs) No, thanks for that very kind introduction, Vinny. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, no, we're glad to have you. Look, Dom, you're reading your resume. It's extensive. You know, you've you've done tons of play-by-play in the minor leagues. You and I have done demos together. Uh, You know, your dad is the voice of the A's, Vince Catronio. You grew up around the game. You know, I personally call you Brian Anderson's young Jedi apprentice. But uh, you know, go ahead and go ahead and brag about yourself a little bit more. Tell us your tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, uh, young Jedi apprentice. I'm still <laughs> chuckling at that. He is definitely a master Yoda to two of us. Um, basically, I come from minor league baseball. For those who don't know, my name is Dominic Catronio. I've been the statistician for Valley Sports Wisconsin for the majority of this season. Uh, so I'm kind of the guy in the back of the booth that's helping out Brian, Jeff, Rock, Tim, you, whomever it may be, with some of the more advanced stuff or things that are in-game. Because, look, these guys do their prep. Uh, these guys do their homework. They understand the game and things like that. I'm not the guy. I'm not literally holding their hand. I'm looking for the things that are in-game that are a little tougher for them to keep track of, given you've got a producer in your ear, you've got cameras, you've got replays, things that become a little more difficult to keep track of. That's my job. And if I notice trends or cool numbers or some amazing metrics and stat cast, because I have access to that. And I'll tweet some of this stuff too. Brewers fans have already kind of found me this season, and it's been great. Uh, there will definitely be more of that coming in the 2022 season. Um, so that's what my day job is with the Brewers and my connection with Milwaukee. Previously, I spent four seasons of minor league baseball in a variety of roles. Most recently with the Houston Astros in 2019, 2020 happened. I had to pivot and figure out what to do next. And here I am chatting with you from your basement, Vinny. (laughs) And you helped set up this basement, by the way. It was an amazing job. This is, it looks great, man. (laughs) I'm, I'm still working that, on the colored lights for myself back here. I'm going to get some stuff going on back here. Yeah, I'm sure you, you'll get it going. You'll get it going for sure. But it's uh, no, it's it's a pleasure to have you on. Look, I, I, I watched Dom at work this summer when I was doing the pre and post game show. And I would you know, I'd pop into the into the press box every once in a while and just see B.A. and Rock work and do their thing. And Dom was right there in the background and he was feeding the, those guys just a lot of really good information. And the way that he can do it and how quickly he comes up with it. Uh, I don't even think you have to look on online half of the time with some of the stuff when you and I would have conversations about it. He's just very, very knowledgeable baseball guy. Pleasure to, uh, again, having gotten gotten to know you and, and to have you on the show here. It's it's a it's a pleasure for sure. So, um, so OK, let's go ahead and pivot. This is what we're going to do on on Fridays from here on out. We are going to break down 
my top prospects, okay, my top prospects for the Milwaukee Brewers. It's not necessarily what the consensus is saying, right? So right off the bat tonight, or I'm sorry, this is Friday morning, this morning, today, you will you will see some names that do not kind of jive with what's going on on those MLB pipeline uh, lists or Baseball America lists because, look, you know, I'm I'm a scout and I have my own opinions and and uh, I want I want to hear Dom's opinions as well on these guys. So, um, but before we even do that, we're gonna go ahead and talk about a flurry of minor league signings today, and I just want to get uh, Dominic's taste takes on some of these guys. But there's a couple guys right here that I'll mention at the end of this list that I do want to talk about a little bit more in depth. But um, just to just to kind of give some news. Uh, the Brewers signed a catcher, Jackson Reitz, outfielder Garrett Whitley, who was a first-rounder back in the day for the Tampa Bay Rays. They signed another right-handed pitcher, Moises Gomez. He's been with the Royals. He has been – no, I'm sorry, the next guy was with the Royals. Arnaldo Hernandez, 25-year-old, who's been with the Royals, has decent numbers, uh, another minor league sign. Um, but the two guys I really wanted to talk about – and get, uh, I'd like your takes on all these guys. Uh, if you've got something down, but the, the two guys, Tyler White, he's got some big league time with the uh, Astros, and then also another guy with the Astros, Jonathan Singleton. And this is the interesting guy for me, is Singleton, because his he was a top prospect, huge prospect on the top 100 list for like three years in a row, baseball's top 100 prospect list. And that list is no joke, those those guys really turn out to, to be productive big leaguers a lot of the time. And this guy had some off the field issues, had some recreational drug issues. And then all of a sudden um, he found himself out of the game. But before that, he signed a $10 million contract. It was like an eight year, $10 million contract that the, that the players union was very disappointed that he signed because they did see big things for him, but it was smart by his, uh, on his accord, right? Because he never, or up until now, he hasn't played much in the big leagues, couple of seasons, 2014 and 15, but this guy could hit. He could always hit. He's he's got a really uh, he's got some skills to really um, drive the baseball to all fields. I played against him, um, believe it or not, in my second to last year, 2015. But now he's with the Brewers. I heard he's absolutely shredded, and he was playing in Mexico this last year after being out of the game for four years. And he had a 1300 OPS. I know it was in in the Mexican league, but look, I don't care what league you're playing in. 1300 OPS that shows that um, you can hit. So the guy can still hit. Perhaps he's matured, but um, I do like this signing. He's a first base only kind of guy. Um, but Dom, I, I do want to get your take on on all these signings and and just kind of your overall feel for these guys. So for Singleton, since we're talking about him first, uh, people kind of forget. Remember, Hunter Pence was an Astro for a very long time on some very bad Astros teams, and Singleton was actually part of that trade from the Phillies to Houston as part of the big return. Singleton was one of the biggest pieces of that trade uh, for the Astros to start kind of looking to the future. Not quite the full rebuild Jeff Luno mode yet, but this was kind of the, all right, 2011, let's figure out what we got here and see what they can transition moving to the future. As you mentioned, it never worked out in Houston. Uh, A lot of folks just were really disappointed down there. And I I think he had something like 100 30, 140 strikeouts in less than 300 plate appearances. It was a really bad year. It was a, uh, his strikeout rate was through the roof, big power, big left-handed bat, but it just didn't work out for him. So in, in response to what the Brewers did, I mean, don't you, th- it's another low risk, high reward signing. The guy, you know, went to Mexico. He proves that there's still a love for the game. You don't just show up in Mexico and think, oh, I'm let's play some exactly. baseball, right? Like that's a commitment yeah. to go to Mexico. And it's it's a low risk, high ceiling. And let's let's also be completely honest. You just re-signed Rowdy Telez, who's another big first base only left handed hitter. So right. depth is never a bad thing to have. There is never there is no such thing as too much depth. We've said it all season long, especially with the outfield depth that the Brewers turned out that they needed to need needed all year. You're going to have an audition at first base behind Rowdy, it seems like at this point, whether it be Keston, whether it be Jace, whether it be somebody else that we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, I think, you know, if Singleton can have a, a healthy spring and assign himself to AAA or get some consistent at bats and his name's called, cool. That, we'll see what happens after that. So uh, that, that's my take on Singleton anyway. 
Yeah, and then and we were talking off camera as well, Dom, about why all of a sudden this flurry of moves. And and you, may, you brought up a really good point. So so you know that this a bunch of minor league guys that they signed today. And why is it today? Well, the Rule Five draft is already come and gone. Uh, that was yesterday. For those who don't know the Rule Five draft, you broke it down really well yesterday about being able, based on service time and in, in layman's term, basically, if a team hasn't put you on a forty man roster in X amount of years, based on your draft year, that they have to allow you to go to another team that wants you. So now all the guys that weren't picked in the MILB phase of the Rule 5 draft, now these guys are basically, they can choose to opt and be free agents. And guys are being notified, hey, you were released before the stoppage happened. And, and also keep in mind, while there are roster limits for AAA, for the 38 men that are on your protected AAA roster, uh, depth is always a good thing again. And you can assign... Plenty of guys, to double A to single A, to extended spring training as moving forward of what should be a much more normal year for minor leagues. Because remember, they were delayed by a month, then they added a month, and there was COVID delays and things like that. The guys, it was a, finally a full-ish year, but you're going to need bodies come next spring training and throughout the season, back-to-back years, kind of like what we're seeing right now in the NBA to cross sport, you know, parallel in that yeah. a lot of early injuries because this is the year that they're trying to squeeze it in. That'll be next year for minor league baseball, going from 0 to 60 to 120. It's going to be a, a, a big, big ask for a lot of these bodies to make it through for guys that maybe over the last two years have only played one season. That's a really, really good point. Um, yeah, and I've actually been hearing the same thing from some of the coaches and some of the guys that I have some relationships with throughout the game, but um, I've heard that same thing. That's a really good point. Next, we're going to get into the the top three prospects. But first, this holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar, Built Bar, filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. So many flavors, you'll have a hard time choosing. Will, you, will it be raspberry or mint brownie? Cherry or double chocolate, cookies and cream, or peanut butter brownie. Built Bar gives you that extra fuel you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all the holiday shoppers. Or if you're just standing in an endless shopping line, Built Bar can give you that extra something to keep you going. So throw one in your jacket or purse. You never know when you are going to need it. Offer is uh, BuiltBar.com. Use the promo code LOCKDOWN15 and get 15% off your order. That's good Next, deal. I want to talk about Stance Apparel. I recently re- received some Stance items, and everything is so colorful and comfortable. The apparel is is very well made, soft, and entire, entirely unique. It's a lot of fun to wear, and I'm looking forward to purchasing more for yourself and others. Stance gives you a sense of confidence simply by feeling good. It was founded in 2009. Stance Apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks, underwear, and active apparel with a sharp focus on comfort, quality, and creativity. Stance brings an atypical aesthetic alongside some of the pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression because everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. The stance apparel item I like to wear most are the socks. I love getting that soft, comfortable, comfortable feeling from a stance sock. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than the fit than fitting in. That those who feel good do good. Go see yourself. Register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Use promo code LOCKDOWN at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a lifeless ordinary, life less ordinary with stance. All right, let's get into it, Dom. Let's get into the top three, my top three. Um, I'm definitely not going with the consensus here, right? MLB pipeline, just to let you guys know, is, you know, they have Garrett Mitchell, number one, Sam Fralick, the first round pick for the Brewers this last year at number two, and Bryce Terang at number three. But my number three prospect is the man child himself, Joey Weimer. Um, Look, this guy is Jason Worth. This is my comp for him. Jason Worth with 30 pounds and three inches, as big as Jason Worth was, and as strong as Jason Worth was. You're just saying that the hair. <laughs> Without the hair. You're right. And the beard. 
But uh, I mean, my goodness, this guy, let's let's take a look at this season really quick. I mean, and I'll let Dom get his take on him because he knows the numbers a little bit better than I do. But this was an OPS of 800, right, for May, June, July. But then all of a sudden you look and you think it's a typo. And when you look at his base, baseball reference, in August and September, he had uh, 1,300 OPS. He had 18 homers in 180 plate appearances. Um, I mean, this the strikeout and walk rate numbers were, were pretty good. He played in high A and low A this year. This was his first full season, and he absolutely tore the cover off the ball. But what was impressive to me and why I have him so high on the prospect list is because he tore the cover off the ball in his first full season later on in the year. He had a phenomenal year, and then he kind of figured things out. This guy was not a guy that performed well in college. He did not show up on the model when I say he did not show up on the model, meaning he does not show up as a high draft pick in terms of the numbers and the analytics and the data when college players show up on there. They usually perform all three seasons. He was an okay performer in college. That's it. Just okay. And now all of a sudden, he gets the pro ball. His first full season, he absolutely rakes in August and September, and he figures it out. He goes to the fall league and rakes again. But Dom, I love this guy. I think these are the kinds of guys that have those huge ceilings, you know, a, a chance to be a perennial all-star. That's the kind of talent this guy has. Whether or not it works out, who knows? But these were the guys I love to scout because they have such a huge ceiling. What do you got? And, and because he's fun to watch too, right? I mean, he was he was kind of the star of the show down in Zebulon and Loe uh, with the Carolina Mudcats. He had a couple of walk-offs there. He had a grand slam there. Uh, it seemed like every other night I was seeing a highlight from their Twitter uh, of him making a sliding catch or hitting a home run or something like that. And for him to do that in his first full season, mind you, he played 15 games of college ball in 2020 and then goes and plays a little bit of indie ball there in upstate New York because just trying to get some ABs in and, and things like that. And now jumping into that, he did exactly what he was supposed to do against low a competition now as a college bat going to low a you would know this obviously Vinny. the age is a, he's a little old. i mean he was only 22 which is pretty much right on on par with it but with college you have figure a little more experience and and that's something that you know scouts would make an eye of but the fact that when he made the jump to to wisconsin to the t-rattlers he kept it going. And as you said, close out strong. I think one of the most underrated things about him, though, and this may or may not have to do with the minor league rule uh, about pickoffs and base stealing. He stole 27 bases this year. Yeah. Or he stole 30 bases, sorry, this year. He he could have been a 30-30 guy. Like he, it, It's amazing. And for those who don't know about the minor league rule this year is that uh, in the lower minors, pitchers only had can only pick off uh, a maximum of three times in the same plate appearance, but on the third time they had to get you. If they didn't get you on the third, it's a free stolen base, it's a free balk. So basically, if a guy picked you off twice or tried to pick you off twice and you're back safe, you think, all right, auto green light, and then you go. He actually was caught a couple of times. I heard an interview with him talking about, I think it'd be easy, and then I got picked off, and I was surprised. So uh, <laughs> that may or may not have something to do with it. And then also in high A, that pitchers couldn't, they had to disengage from the rubber as opposed to doing like an Andy Pettit right. move over to first. That may or may not have something to do with it, but hey, this is also maybe the future of baseball, guys. So just saying. Yeah. So uh, I thought that's one of the most underrated tools about Joey. Um, seems like a fun kid. And yeah, the flow is great for a guy that doesn't have any hair. Uh, I absolutely love to watch it <laughs> and uh, really cool to see him play. I, I like your pick, though. I, I, it, he's still young. He's only going to be 23 in February. So, um, and enough said, he was the Robin Yacht Minor League Player of the Year this year, too. We got to make sure we mention that for Joey, too. Yeah, no, I mean, again, just an absolutely phenomenal last two months of the season. Overall, a phenomenal season to win that minor league player of the year. And then he did go to the fall league and, and totally rake as well. So um, it, it, he'll be a fun one to watch for sure. I know we've talked about him on the show in the past. He will be talked about more because this guy is very dynamic and fun to watch. I did want to get into the next prospect, number two prospect for me. Again, not is he's not on... He's barely in the top 10, which is surprising when you look at MLB.com. But Aaron Ashby is my number two prospect for the Milwaukee Brewers. And this is my take on that. He's nasty. How about that? Dom, this <laughs> guy is absolutely filthy. We saw it when he got called up to the big leagues. I mean, he has four quality plus pitches. His fastball was sitting at 98, 
99 we saw, and it, the bottom falls out of the thing. Left-handed, disgusting sinker. He's got the slider to go with it. He's actually got a nasty, nasty changeup to go with it when it's right. He's got a curveball as well. So this guy has all the tools. There's a little bit of funk in there in terms of whether or not he can repeat the delivery over the course of a start, but he's shown that he can do that in the minor league. So I'm betting that he's going to be a starter. He may even start this next year and be that sixth starter for the Brewers. Um, but we we don't know that yet, obviously. we got to wait to see who they do sign if they bring another arm in. But Aaron Ashby is the number two prospect for me just because, again, this is a, a super high-talent guy that has a, a very, very high ceiling. Aaron Ashby, love him. Dom, what do you got? And, and before people freak out, like, how is he a prospect? He was in the big leagues this year. He actually right. is still got his rookie status intact for next year. So he can technically win rookie of the year next year and, and keep it going as far as reliever of the year, rookie of the year, whatever the Brewers want to keep winning uh, out of their bullpen. I, I could see a Freddie Peralta type role for him. Remember when Freddie was first coming up that – you know, swing man can give yeah. you some extended spot start. I think, I mean, I, I'd, I'd be shocked if he doesn't break camp uh, on the, on the active roster. I mean, he was on the playoff roster. He had some big innings. There'd be, unless there'd be a big setback or something that uh, un unforeseen at this point. I, in his role in April, quite frankly, is probably going to be different come August and September. Uh, he's a guy that's going to be molded and they're going to try to figure out what they have out of him. If you want to get length out of him, uh, but man, sitting 98 from the left side with two wipeout pitches to go along with the Williams and the hater. I mean, they, they, they didn't sign Brad Boxberger. They didn't re-sign Brad Boxberger. They got Jake Cousins, obviously, to come back for another year. But man, that bullpen is not a three-headed monster anymore. It's like a five-headed monster if all, if all yeah. if Boxberger comes back too. So that'd be crazy if he goes there. And I just want to point out too, remember, he, he made 13 appearances this year in the big league club. And two of those were absolute clunkers. His first one right. and his last one. Right. And it really inflated his numbers. The last one, you remember, it was garbage time. Brewers had already clinched the playoffs, gave up the grand slam to Max Muncy, and, and everything kind of spiraled out of that. And in the first one, it was that wacky Cubs game that the, the Brewers scored 15 unanswered runs in. So uh, you take those out, and he was a sub-2 ERA, uh, better, than, better than 10 strikeouts per nine-inning type guy coming out of the bullpen. And, by the way, will be 24 in May. I, I, I just really like the kid. I'm with you. Uh, you know, the, we, we got to see plenty of Ashby at the end of the year. Get that taste. And, and you can speak to this too. How important is that taste? I mean, for especially for a young pitcher, pitching in playoff atmospheres and sellout crowds and then pitching in the playoffs. Do people oversell that? Or do you think that's actually something worth uh, mentioning? It's huge. And the fact this is, and I'm glad you brought that up because at the end of the day, this is one of the things I love most about this kid is the fact that he talk about a clunker That's more than a clunker his major league debut. I mean, this yeah. was a, a seven run debacle. I think it was might've been even more than seven runs, but he just totally lost it. Right. He goes out into the media room and handles their questions. Like no big deal. This guy, it was like he had been there for 10 years and he gave up seven runs in the first and never. So this is his major league debut in front of his family, his friends, the whole sellout crowd in Milwaukee. And he goes out there and, and he handles it. And then he comes, he goes back down to triple a comes back and was totally lights out after that. And that's, what's so impressive about this kid. He's got that mindset. He knows he's a big leaguer. And the pedigree, obviously, is Andy Ashby's nephew. That has something to do with it. Um, the fact that he can – the big leagues, is it doesn't intimidate him. It's not too big for him. And being a very good big leaguer is not too big for him either. And, and again, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because this is, this is a kid that's going to be a Milwaukee Brewer, a staple for the Brewers for a long time in the rotation is my belief. So, um, But we do have to get to the number one prospect – but before we do that, we have to take a break. Okay, welcome back. My number one prospect, Dom. Give me a drum roll. I'm sure you can dub that in because you're the tech guy. But yeah, it's... <laughs> number one prospect for the Milwaukee Brewers is Bryce Terang. Hmm. This is my guy right here. And this is why. Because honestly... I, I don't even care what he did this year. I, 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 I didn't see one game that he played in because obviously, um, you know, I wasn't scouting anymore. 
But this kid, what I saw from him in 2019 was off the charts instincts. It was off the charts skill. Like this guy, talk about pedigree. Um, he doesn't necessarily have the name pedigree. I think his dad played professionally. I'll have to check that. I should have known that going in. But um, this guy w- was brought up around the game, and this guy has all the instincts in the world. Bat to ball skills. Um, he, he currently just uses the other field a lot. He's got to learn how to pull the ball. I think that will come with strength. And once once that comes, he'll end up hitting 20 home runs. And I, and I truly believe that. Let's talk about his defense. Yeah, he's he's a very good defender. He can stick at short, in my opinion. Plenty of arm, in my opinion. I saw this guy, you know, do things on the field as a as a 19 year old in Appleton in 2019 that you don't see, you know, 30 year olds do in the big leagues. I mean, this guy, the instincts are off the charts. I really cannot wait until this kid shows up in Milwaukee. Um, he he's really really one of the guys that I really love, and obviously, um, you know. I, I'm sure people are going to disagree with me, but he is my number one prospect for the Milwaukee Brewers um, and this guy. And I'm and I'm so glad that Stearns listens to this podcast during the year because I told him not to trade Bryce Terang at the deadline. So I'm glad he listened to me because this is my guy, Bryce Terang, number one prospect. Well, there are some things with Bryce, too, that you, you, you kind of alluded to. And the fact is he's slick defender. He's advanced through the ranks very quickly. He's a first round pick. He's a SoCal kid. Yep. I think what's really, really impressive about Bryce is that he's doing it at the upper levels, and he just turned 22. Yep. That's extremely young for AAA. That's and, and you can kind of attest to it, too. How rare, not only for it to be a 22-year-old or a 21-year-old in the upper AA, AAA levels, but to be playing an up-the-middle position. Why is that such a big deal to scouts and the guys like you? Yeah, because up the middle is where all the action happens. I mean, you always want to be strong up the middle. Obviously, you want a very strong defensive catcher, You want, and then you want your best two players to play up the middle in the infield, right? Your shortstop and second baseman, and then obviously your best athlete on the field should be playing center field as well. So if you're strong up the middle, you have a very good backbone for run prevention, and that's what we see for the, from the Brewers last year, and I think that's obviously something that they're going to value going forward, but yeah, I, I, I agree. He's, he's he's up the middle player, um, and I personally think he's going to stick at short. Yeah, it, it's interesting to see because, I mean, they do technically – Willie will be entering his first year of arbitration next year. So you got to figure out what you're going to do as far as looking to the future. Yeah. And also, you've got time. Again, the kid just turned 22. Exactly. There's not a massive rush to get him up. You've got – You've got Arias at third, you've got Adamas at short, you've got Wong at second, and you've got Rowdy at first. Your infield is set for 2022, barring any injuries. Jace being in that super utility role again as well. So barring injuries, you know, assuming health, assuming performance, you're pretty set on the infield for 22, which will allow, take his time, he can really grow into his body. He's still growing, and it's such a beautiful swing watching tape of him this year down in Nashville. He, I like, I like the pick. I, I think the reason why people are always expecting Garrett Mitchell or or an Ashby to be a number one is that they are the most, they're probably closest to the big leagues. Uh, is, especially Mitchell coming out of Double A. As long as he's healthy, he should be in the mix at some point in the outfield. You would expect at some point this year. Um, I, I, you don't need to rush Terang. I, I really like yeah. his swing. I'm with you on the def- on the defense, man. Like he's a smooth, smooth guy up the middle. Uh, it, it's really fun to watch, and something to keep in mind too is that both Biloxi and Nashville are not exactly hitters' parks, right. uh, or even those leagues for for the most part. So something to keep in mind when you see the numbers maybe a little bit muted. And reminder, he's young. Those ballparks are huge, and you know you look at the first month and the last month going to be a little bit colder in Nashville. Uh, you look at the Southern League; they're giant ballparks. Those are all old ballparks. So, and you got that heavy Gulf air coming in too. So that's just a little note, little inside baseball that guys uh, like you are certainly are aware of, and the scouts and the evaluators are certainly aware of too. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think Bryce Turan. I, there's no need to rush this kid. I would, I would even be comfortable keeping him down in in the minor leagues all year. Maybe a call up at the end or something if you really need him. Something similar to what we saw with Mario Feliciano last year coming up for just one or two games last year. Well, and yeah, it goes back to what we were talking yeah. about earlier. Depth is never a bad thing because look exactly. at May for the Brewers, right? How brutal was May? 
given you lose all the catchers. Mario has to come up and make a, a spot, a couple of starts. You lose almost your entire outfield, and you have to figure out, well, thank goodness you had you had Tyrone Taylor on the roster. Thank goodness you had, you know, I mean, Lorenzo Cain gets hurt. Yelich was off to that solo start. Then he had the back issue. Yeah, Jackie Bradley Jr. I mean, it was huge to have that and Jace being able to play left field. Depth is never, ever, ever a bad thing. And uh, one of my personal friends, Jamie Westbrook, down in Nashville, we talk about it all the time. You're one injury, one rolled ankle from going to the show tomorrow, right? It, it just yep. happens in the blink of an eye. And depth is always important to all of these teams. Yeah, without a doubt. No, that's a really good take on that. But watch out for Bryce Trang. My opinion, the future, obviously Dom, the baseball savant, also likes him. Dom, I really appreciate I really, really appreciate you coming on. Um, but that'll do it for this episode of Lockdown Brewers. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Brewers. Be sure you subscribe to Lockdown Brewers YouTube channel as well, right? That's gonna help us out. And you can follow me at Vinny Rotino. You can follow Dom Catronio at Dom underscore Catronio. If you spell Catronio right on first try, I'll give you a high five. <laughs> <laughs> when you see him in the press box this season, but for sure. Also make sure you subscribe to the Lockdown Brewers podcast, wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.